All right, let's see if we are live. I am trying to come back in to chat with you guys. Let's see. Hello, hello. All right, I think we are live inside the Facebook community and I'm super excited. I apologize for this morning and the, the messiness of the training that we did this morning. So I decided to come back in and I'm gonna do the training again for those of you who tuned in, um, you can fast forward to that part. But if you are here live, say hi and let me know you are watching live. If you are on replay, give me a hashtag replay so I know you're here as well. Today, we're gonna to be chatting about um, a really, really good topic that I see come up, comes up often in the online business world. It's about how to get your audience to say yes and how to get them off the sidelines and into saying yes faster. So um, if you've ever experienced this, it looks like you're creating valuable content, you're showing up in your Facebook group, maybe you're doing live trainings like this every single week, you're going through the motions of doing what you've been told to do, but it's not producing the result you want, which is more clients actually saying yes. And so what I wanna do with you is break down why this is actually happening and what we call decision fatigue, how to actually get in front of this so that you actually have clients saying yes faster and understanding the basis and the strategy behind how decisions are being made, which is gonna be super valuable, not only for how you show up in like your social media content or in um, your platforms, et cetera, but also on how you manage sales itself, okay? So as you're popping on, say hi, let me know you're here on live or on replay um, as we jump in. But again, let me break it down for you so that you guys understand. I had a client who recently came to me. She's been in business for about six years. She's running a super successful group. And she's like, I have a lot of people on my email list, a lot of people in my Facebook group, but I feel like not all of them are buying. So we quickly made the shifts that I'm going to share with you guys here today. And she literally had a $25,000 a month just by making these shifts and getting people out of standing on the sidelines and into saying yes, okay? So I wanna be clear that it's not a matter of you need more leads in your business all the time. If you have a following or you have an email list of 100 people, you probably have more than enough leads to get people to say yes. The problem is that you need to be able to get them off the sidelines of just hanging out and watching and like seeing what you're doing and into actually purchasing and like handing over their money and their time and saying yes, okay? So drop a yes if this is so far making sense to you so that I know you're here. Um, so here's what I want you guys to understand. And I'm going to share my screen because I have a little, um, my, my little graphics to show you that I wasn't able to show you guys this morning. So the very first thing we need to understand in this is understanding their awareness level. Okay. So right before I jump in, I know we have a lot of new members in the group. My name is Naza Chiveri. I'm a business growth strategist, an 18 year marketing expert, and I help my clients turn their leads into paying clients in just seven days with an evergreen client acquisition system. So let's jump in and let me share my screen with you if this decides to be nice. So give me a second. And drop screen in the comments once you guys see my screen. So if you guys can see my screen here, um, I am sharing with you my uh, a couple of slides that we have actually inside of my Sustainable Profit Academy. But I want to break down for you guys two key things. Number one, you need to understand the um, phases of awareness. I feel like a lot of people haven't mastered in understanding that we have to know where our clients are in the awareness levels. Um, hey, Erica, in order to, I'd love to, um, in order to see where they are to make a purchase. So I want you guys to understand that oftentimes the reason that you're not actually converting your clients into sales is because you're hitting them at the long, wrong level of awareness, okay? So if you look at this as a really super basic uh, phases of awareness, phase one is that they're unaware of the problem and solution it means that they're kind of hunky dory doing their thing not thinking twice um phase number two is that they're aware of the problem but they don't know what solutions are out there um, phase number three is that they're aware of the solutions, but they don't know about your solution, your offer. Phase number four is they're aware of your offer, but they're not sold. They don't know if it's really right for them. They're, you know, they're comparison shopping, et cetera. And phase five is ready, um, ready for your offer and they're pre-sold and working with you, okay? So real talk, most people... <laughs> Most people are selling to people who are at stage one or stage two, okay? This causes a huge problem in your marketing process because what you're doing is spending all of your time convincing. It means you're convincing them they have a problem, you're convincing them they have a solution, and then you're convincing them that they should work with you. 
Okay. This increases your sales cycles. It makes it exhausting for you. And you're technically actually repelling clients who want to work with you now. Okay. So I want you guys to understand this. I tell my clients, you want to work with people who are at stage three and above means that they are aware of, they know that they're aware of this, the problem and they are aware of other solutions. That might sound backwards. You're like, well, I don't want them to know other solutions exist. And that's actually only the case when you can't differentiate yourself from the market, when you don't have a way to literally make yourself incomparable. But we technically want to speak to people who are at level three and above because they're ready to invest. So if you want to shortcut your sales cycles, like how I talk about seven days and in, in getting to do that, these are people who are ready to invest. They're not screwing around. They're not dipping their toes in the water. They're not downloading every free be imaginable. They want to make a decision and they want to make it quickly. Okay. I want you to be clear about this. When I say premium clients, I'm talking people who are not messing around. They want to purchase. They want to say yes, because if you think about it, clients want to say yes. And I'm really, I know people get frustrated hearing that, but your client wants to say yes. The problem is if you're speaking to them at a time when they're not aware, then what you're doing is causing yourself to do a lot more work. So what I see people do to combat this is they create a lot of educational content. They try to educate people on why they have a problem, why that problem is a big enough problem to solve, and why their solution is the right solution. So they're working extra hard to do that. In the meantime, repelling people who have already been like, oh, I need, I need a help. I need a solution right now because they feel like they're not the right person for them. They're not solving the problem that they have. Okay. Give me a thumbs up or an emoji if this is making sense so far and you guys are understanding. Our goal is to touch people at phase three in the level of awareness so that they are actually ready to start making decisions, okay? This is the big shift. So my clients don't create content that speaks to people who are unaware of problems, okay? They speak to the people who are aware and they shift their beliefs into seeing their opportunity. Because as I mentioned, decision fatigue is essentially where people are inundated with so much information that they can't make a decision. This typically happens in stage one or stage two, okay? Because they're not really ready and they don't know how to take the information they've gotten and make sense out of it. So they're literally consumers. They're just consuming, consuming, consuming. I can spot these people from a mile away. You'll see them. They're the same people who raise their hands for everybody's freebie. And they're on like every ad saying, okay, yeah, I want to register. They just want to consume more information. They're always hungry for information. They don't know how to make a decision. So they are literally in decision fatigue. Okay. You're going to see these people. You're going to start to notice them and you're going to be like, oh shoot, I'm talking to these people. You're talking to the people who are in consumption and not action. Okay. We want to shift out of that. We want to speak to the people who are actually ready to take action. They're not screwing around. They're not dipping their toes in the water. They want to make a choice. Okay. So that's number one is I want you guys to understand that and see how that works. So if you know that you're speaking to the person at the right stage, you're going to be able to create more of a, an opportunity to convert, okay? So here's what I want you guys to think about next. Next, you're gonna see on my screen, I have a, um, it's like a wheel of decision-making, okay? 99% of people I talk to when I ask them, what is the process by which your audience makes decisions? They do not know. And there, there's no shame in it. I want you to hear that, okay? I'm a total marketing nerd and psychology nerd, and I get really into these kinds of things. So I probably know too much about it. But it is super important for you to understand and know how your audience makes decisions. Because if you're not, if you don't know what actions they take to make a decision, then all you're doing is creating content and throwing spaghetti at the wall. All you're doing is creating webinars and throwing spaghetti at the wall. All you're doing is getting people on sales calls and throwing spaghetti at the wall. You don't know what they go, what goes through their mind and the process that they go through in order to make a decision, okay? We don't want to do that. We want to know, here's how someone makes a decision. Here's what they need at every stage when they're making that decision. And here's how I'm going to get them to say yes faster. Otherwise, spaghetti at the wall means we're spending tons and tons of time testing theories, throwing stuff out there, hoping it works. Okay. So this is like a typical version of how decision is made, decisions are being made. Okay. Now keep in mind, your audience might make decisions slightly differently, but literally the psychology behind sales, this is the basis, okay? So the basis is, number one, I mentioned, we speak to the people at that third phase, right? Phase three is that they are aware of a solution, but they don't know if you're offering. They know what solutions exist. They know the problems that exist. They want to make the next steps, okay? We want to speak to those people. 
Step two is they begin assessing solutions, which means they've made a decision that they want to solve the problem. They do not know what solution is the best solution for them. So what they're doing is, for an example, my clients who come to me and they're like, I want to pipeline a premium clients. They're probably assessing solutions such as, should I run a webinar? Should I do a workshop? Should I do um, live launches? Should I do ads? Should I do? They're like literally assessing all the solutions available to them. Okay. They're seeing what information is there. So they're in consumption, right? We want to take them out of consumption mode as quickly as possible. Now, let me explain to you how we take them out of consumption and into this, like now determining what uh, solutions, like who's the right solution. Okay. We do not speak to, Hey, let me give you more information, which creates more decision fatigue. Instead, what we want to do is we want to speak to here's what the belief shift is in understanding why other solutions have a gap and here's how we fill it. So what we end up doing is we don't add information. So we're not like literally giving them more stuff to think about. We're taking away other solutions. We're making a clear pathway to a yes. So we're taking away all this like compounding information that they're just sitting there and like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do with it. We're instead taking that away from them and saying, hey, I know you want to make a decision. And right now, if I give you more information, just like teach you, teach you, teach you, do how to's, how to's, how to's, you can't do anything with it. You're not going to act on it. You're just going to sit there and say, oh my gosh, more information. What do I do with it? Right? Instead of what we want to do is we want to be able to get them out of that and into decision-making mode. So to get them into decision-making mode, we remove other things out of their way. We say, hey, if you're this person and you want to create this result, this is why webinars won't work for you. Here's what's missing out of them. Boom. Now they just check mark one thing off their list that they know isn't going to work for them. Move along, move along, move along. Now you're helping them make decisions quickly. Okay. Drop a one if this is making sense to you and you're understanding and you're like, holy crap, maybe I've been doing this all along, wrong all along, and all I've been doing is adding to decision fatigue, and now I need to move into how do I help them make decisions, okay? Our goal here is to move them into decision making. That's where we assess solutions. Step three is comparing alternatives, okay? Here's the deal. At any given point, when someone has now made the decision that they want to work with someone who helps them with client acquisition instead of just simply lead generation, they're now going to compare what my solutions are out there. Who can help me do this? Okay. So they're going to say, who are the top three, five, 10 people who are doing this that may be able to support me? They're going to look at them. They're going to put them on like a comparison sheet, essentially, not really. You're going to put them on a comparison sheet and they're going to say, what's the difference between these people? So first they assess the solutions, right? What is the solution to my problem? Then they're going to they're going to compare the alternatives. Who, who's your competitors and how can they look at what's going to work best? Here's where it becomes important. If it is too much work for them to see the difference between you and your competitor, if they can't see that literally within minutes of being introduced to you, they're going to move along for the cheapest solution. This is what we say when we say we, they compete based on price. Competing based on price means you look too similar to everyone else, so they're going to look for the cheapest solution. That's what our brain does to keep us really safe is, okay, cool. If they all look the same and I can compare them all the same, which one's the cheapest? Why would I buy a shirt for $15 at one store if I could buy it for $2 and it's the same exact shirt? No one's going to do that, right? They're not going to do that just because you have a bubbling personality with the same exact thing. So if they put you on a comparison sheet and you look similar to other solutions that are cheaper than you, you are going to be being uh, competing based on price. So what my clients do is they literally create no alternatives, it means they create a space where there is no competition, meaning that maybe these other people get to the same results, but it's not by the same process. And therefore they have their own market of saying, holy crap, yes, I need this. That's how my EZS method works. It works like nothing else out there. It's a proprietary methodology that I created to deliver the result of I want to be able to uh, convert more clients or convert leads into clients in seven days, a pipeline of premium clients in my inbox, and I want to be able to deliver um, amazing world-class experiences, right? This is what my clients want. The process by which I help them get there is the EZS method, and there is nothing else out there like that, right? My bingeable authority system is literally something I've created that is massively efficient effective and the fastest and most effective way of converting clients. My uh, dynamic framework technique is literally something I created in order to help you create proprietary methodology. So I'm literally doing these things in a way nobody else can. So I don't look like everyone else. So if someone sits in front of me, they're not comparing me to Joe Schmo down the street who does something very similar and saying, okay, well, I'll just go with Joe Schmo because he's cheaper or he does it faster, right? We don't want to do that. We want to make it incomparable so that someone can easily say yes. 
Shortcuts the sales process, shortcuts the entire decision making process. Okay. Drop a two if this is making sense so far and you understand I need to be incomparable. I need to create a way for my audience to be able to say yes without us spending tons of time. Okay. That's number two. Or that's that's the, that's what we just talked about, right? Next is alleviation of risk. This is what I call safety. Okay, this is where they now see. Okay, here's what you do. Here's how you do it, and I understand how it's worked for other people. How do I know it's going to work for me? Okay, it's it's technically how can they feel safe in making a decision with you? Okay. So oftentimes I say this is them being able to visualize themselves in the transformation and being able to see how it would specifically work for them. If they cannot visualize it, but they see all these other things, they will not move forward. They will not make a decision if they do not feel like they can feel safe in that decision. That's why I say they have to feel empowered and safe in their decision-making process. If I'm pushing them solely for the sake of them making the decision, they're always going to be off put. They're always going to be repelled. That's why we don't do that in our sales process. We make it where it's a safe decision. We alleviate the risk. Okay. This allows us to make a decision. So this typical decision-making process can take anywhere from 90 to 180 days. Okay, that's three to six months, if not more. This is the average decision-making cycle time. I shortcutted this to seven days. Why? Because I was able to take all of these pieces and put them together. These pieces are all part of what we call the bingeable authority system. And then this is all part of the sales process. So we call this empowered decision-making, okay? We shortcutted this entire process so that by the time someone gets to the point of trying to make a decision, they've already pre made that decision. They've been pre-sold into saying yes. So they're not spending 30 days here, 30 days here, 30 days here. They're not spending all this time because they're not ready. We're making it easy. That's why it's called easy yes, right? Making it an easy pathway so that they can make decisions quickly. Okay. Drop yes in the comments if this is making sense. I want to make sure this is making sense. Again, whether you're on live or on replay, I want to make sure you guys are, are understanding this concept. Okay. So I want to explain to you guys something that's important. I'm going to stop sharing because that was my visuals for you guys today. So here's what I want you guys to understand when it comes to creating a process and a sales machine and client acquisition system that is working to help people make decisions. It empowers them to make decisions. Here's what you need to know. Okay. A few years ago, I literally sat uh, across the room from a friend and said to them, oh my gosh, my audience is a bunch of people who don't want to buy from me. Okay. And if that's you and you've ever felt that way, drop an emoji. If you've ever felt like, oh my gosh, I'm showing up, I'm giving value. I know I'm good at what I do, but I cannot seem to move people from sitting on the sidelines to saying yes. It's one of the most frustrating things. And so you start to tell yourself, maybe the problem is that my audience doesn't want the thing that I have and that I need to come back down to where they are. I need to acquiesce to the position that they're in right now, which is scared, confused, not able to make decisions. I need to come down here and give them just a taste test. This is where the whole idea of creating tons of free offers and tons of ascent, the ascension model of like low ticket, low ticket, low ticket came from this idea that let's create a system that speaks to people when they're down here and can't make decisions, where they're scared and they don't know what to do and they're in information overload. Cool. Let me just give them a free offer. Let me just give them a... Um, let me just give them another low ticket offer so that it doesn't feel overwhelming to make a decision. But what we didn't realize and people didn't realize when it came to that is that people weren't scared to make decisions. They just didn't feel like they knew how to make that decision. So it's not, yes, it's like they could buy a $27 offer. That doesn't mean that they're going to go pay you to work with you and get the result they want because they're still scared. They still purchase that. They're still indulging in too much information. You'll see the same thing, whether it's free offers or $27 offers, you're going to see, and maybe you're that person. And if you are, take recognition of this and re realize that if you're the type of person who's consuming every $27 offer or free offer out there, you're in decision-making fatigue. You're in this, oh my gosh, let me just get more information until I can make a decision. I don't feel safe to make that decision. Okay. We don't want to do that because what ends up happening, and I did this for years, is you're tailoring your entire marketing sales client acquisition strategy to the clients that you don't want. So here's the shift I want you to think about, okay? You want to tailor your client acquisition strategy to the client you want, not simply the client you have. I want to repeat that. I want you to tailor your client acquisition strategy, not to the clients that you don't want. I want you to tailor it to the clients that you do want. So if you want clients who are like, oh my gosh, yes, let me say yes. 
I know that what I want and I just need the right things for me to make the decision to yes. And I want to do it quickly. You need to tailor your marketing, your sales, your client acquisition to those people. Not to the people who are down here and can't make decisions because then you're literally taking yourself down to their level and wondering why people can't get to where you are. Okay. It's like me trying to get my child to be better at math and saying, but I'm going to give you second grade level math when I should be giving you fourth grade level math. I can't go down to where they are just to try and get them up there. I need to slowly start moving them up there by elevating the experience, elevating the client acquisition strategy. So tailor your client acquisition to the client you want, not simply the clients you have. I guarantee you, your audience will elevate to that level. Okay. So let's talk about the common reasons why people don't buy, why they get into decision fatigue, okay? They get in decision fatigue for three common reasons. Number one, they're confused on the problem. <laughs> Means they've been giving all this how-tos and they don't really know what is my problem. Is it that I'm not getting clients because I don't have the right social media presence? Is it because I don't have the right sales process? Is it because I need a webinar? They're like, I don't know what the problem is. They can't diagnose the problem for themselves, okay? That often happens when we're giving them too much information and or you have multiple offers, multiple messages, okay? We want to take them out of problem confusion. We want to make it super freaking crystal clear. If you want to achieve this, this is your problem. Don't leave it up to chance. There is no other way. And explain to them by shifting their beliefs why all the other things that they've been told are the problem are not the problem. Take that out of the running for them. Let them check that off their list that those are not the problems. Second thing that typically happens is a solution confusion, meaning they're totally confused on what solution they need to solve that problem. Again, this often happens because of inundation of more information rather than clearing the pathway for them. This is because you're talking about different things all the time and they don't know what to pay, keep track of. Other people are talking about the different things and they're like, I can't keep it straight, okay? Number three is offer confusion. They're confused on, okay, now they've, they've been bought into you. They bought into the problem. They bought into the solution. They bought into you, but I don't know what offer I need because I'm confused on how and which offer solves for that. Okay. This happens literally every day. I see this every day with newer business owners all the way up to business owners who are seven figures that are doing this and it's exhausting for them. It's exhausting for their audience. So they're churning through their audience. Okay. So how do we solve for this problem? How do we get people out of decision fatigue? We create your position in the market. What's your position in the market? Meaning that if someone had to know you in just a few words, how would you be positioned in the market? Who are you? What do you do? Next, messaging congruency. Do you have a message that rings through all the way that someone says you're this person that it literally rings true in every piece of messaging that you have? Are you confusing your audience? Are you talking about different things every day? Or one day you're talking about leads and one day you're talking about this and one day you're talking about another thing. And they're like, so which one is it? Who are you about? Oh my gosh, I lost track. I'm moving on to someone else. Okay. Next is you have to have a nurture or sales process, like a sales machine in your business that allows you to cater to those clients who are already up here. You're getting other people to elevate to that level so they can make decisions quickly. You need a sales process that touches on the decision-making circle, it touches on how people make decisions in their business or in their lives and literally gives them only what they need to make that decision, okay? I call this the guided stalking. If you've ever woken up to somebody like literally stalking your social medias and like looking at everything and oh my gosh, you know that all of a sudden they like you and like you're like, what do I do next? You want to create a guided stalking, meaning someone meets you how do I help them go from who is this person to, oh my gosh, I'm pre-sold in a short amount of time. I don't just hope that they figure it out and go through enough content. I don't put them in a place where they're left to figure it out. Same thing goes for a website. If they go to your website and they have to figure out where to go and they're figuring out their own process, then they're probably not going to do what you want. They're not going to create the result you want, which is a decision. If there's not a process that literally takes them through that decision-making circle. Okay. This is why the EZS method is so freaking effective. It's built around decision-making psychology. It's built around how people make decisions and how to target people at the right awareness level with the message and positioning that allows you to do that and make it crystal clear in the first few seconds. And then how to actually help them make a decision quickly and effectively while feeling totally empowered, making them feel safe, okay? Literally, that is the process. How do we do it? We do it by number one, 
we create our proprietary methodology. We create the opportunity for people to see what it is that we do and how we do it in a way that nobody else does, okay? So that's proprietary methodology. That's what I was saying, to make you not look like everybody else and have a message that articulates what you do, super freaking crystal clear methodology. Because now it's not, oh, I do this and I do that, I do. You have like literally this package that explains what you do in minutes, minutes. So people can make a decision and understand what you do really quickly, alleviates that whole process. That's number one. Number two, we have a sales machine, a sales machine that runs in the background of your business to take cold leads who come in to meet with you, take them on their decision-making journey in less than seven days to come out the other side, pre-sold, ready to work with you. I'm talking about literally, I get on phone calls and my clients get on phone calls with people saying they literally already said, I want to say yes in the first minute of talking to them because they understand what they do. They understand how they do it. And they understand why that's important in solving their problem the best, fastest, strongest way possible. Okay. That's step two. Step three is the one offer framework. One offer framework means I don't want you confusing your audience. I don't want you having all these different pieces. And then your audience is like, I have no idea what to focus on. What's the right thing? What's the wrong thing? Okay. Remember decision fatigue comes from if you are contributing to that decision fatigue by giving them more how to's, too much information, too many different messages, too many different offers. So what my clients do is we have one client acquisition system. We call it the bingeable authority system, one client acquisition system. So it's not a funnel because a funnel is offer specific. It's pushing you to an offer. It means that if you have multiple offers, oh my gosh, you're going to have multiple things, multiple messages, multiple funnels, multiple processes. Client acquisition system that we do, Bingeable Authority System, focuses on one methodology. So we're selling a methodology. So they come out the other end being bought into your methodology, and then you get to move them into where they should go offering wise. Everything is a straight line instead of most people are like this, sending their audience on like a wild goose chase to say yes. And then they're wondering why they're not saying yes. Okay. These are three core components of the easiest method is we literally take them through that. And the third piece of that is the one offer framework. How can we create one offer that can be duplicated in how we serve our clients so that we get them incredible results? There's messaging congruency. There's no question of what we do and how we do it. People can see it, they can understand it, and they can repeat it to other people. Literally almost every single one of my clients that works with me goes and refers one other person to me because they can do that with ease, knowing what I do, how I do it, and why that's important. Okay, this is why it's so, so important. So if you want to know how the easiest method works for your business to rapidly scale, stop doing all the confusing stuff, create one method, one system, and one offer framework, drop easy yes or send me a message and we could chat about this. I'll show you exactly how we do this and how my clients have been able to have 10K days, $45,000 months, even 100K, 200K months, literally with this one system. Okay. So let me know if you guys have any questions, if you guys can understand why and how we take people out of decision fatigue and into decision making, saying yes, quickly and effectively, so they're not on the sidelines. It's about really making it a cohesive and straight line, straight pathway, stop teaching how-to content, stop talking to people at the wrong awareness level, and know what their decision making process is, okay? Let me know if this was helpful to you guys. If you guys have any questions at all, <clears throat> if you want to book a client acquisition audit so we can talk about how this looks like for you and your business, it's a super um, low key call where we'll talk about the easiest method. We'll show you how this actually looks for you and your business and how you can apply this to actually start having a pipeline of premium clients who are pre-sold and saying yes before they even get on a phone call with you. Okay. Thank you for those who showed back up for the, re the, the repeat of this in, in the morning I got cut off. I hope this was helpful to you guys and I hope to chat with you guys soon.